So still on our exercise number six, now question three, considering this. We are given J can N, this is, uh, these are the angles that we're given there. From J to K to N, this is three X. N K M, that is N to K to M, which is X. M K L, from M to K to L, this is two X. Angle N, which is 60 degrees. Everything are given there. So M, K, and N are points on the circle. Okay, so we've got point M, K, and N. They are on the circle. So the question is, if this J, K, L is a straight line, we are told that this is a straight line. All right, this is a straight line. Determine the value of X. Okay, so if this here is a straight line, what do we know? We know that angles on a straight line add up to 180. Angles on a straight line. All right, they add up to 180. So using the concept that angles on a straight line add up to 180, it's going to be this as an equation. If I add this angle, 3x to this x to this 2x. I'm supposed to obtain 180 degrees angles on a straight line. That was the case. So meaning to say at the end, what are we going to have if we had to add this? Uh, that is 3 plus 1 plus 2, which is going to be 6 there. So we've got 6x, which is equal to 180 degrees, divided by 6, uh, by 6 there. So we've got the value of x, and that was going to be uh, 30 degrees. So meaning to say, wherever you see x, it is 30 degrees. This here is 30 degrees. So if it is given as 2x, what does it mean? 2 times 30, meaning to say this is, 60 degrees, 3x, three, 3 times 30. Meaning to say we're talking of what? 90 degrees. That is the idea there. All right. Anyways, let's see the other part. On 3.2, prove that 3.21, NK is a diameter of the circle. NK is a diameter to a circle. This is NK. It is a diameter. How can we prove that? All right. We know that if truly this is a diameter, a diameter must subtend an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference. A diameter subtends an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference. So is it the case? We are supposed to calculate this angle. 3.21. So if we had to calculate this angle, which is N to M back to, to K, this is our angle. So using the concept of angles in a straight, uh, angles in a triangle, I mean, we are going to subtract everything from 180. So angles in a triangle, we know that they're supposed to add up to 180 already. If we said X is what? 30 degrees. So there's a 30 here. There's a 30. So it is going to subtract the 30 degrees. You subtract also the 60 degrees. So subtracting everything from 180, this was going to give you a 90 degrees. So this angle here is 90 degrees. So if this angle, NMK, is 90 degrees, it, this cannot, it, cannot, it cannot just exist. Never. It cannot just exist. Give it a circle like this. It, it cannot just exist. We know it's from a diameter. A diameter only is the one that can subtend an angle of 90 degrees at the center. So this tells us that, therefore, uh, 
is nk is a diameter to the circle. That is the idea. The, the, we know that a diameter subtends of an angle of what? A diameter subtends an angle of, that's an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference. All right, at this, guys, I'm just going to write here at the circumference and so on and so on. All right, so that is the idea uh, of your theorems, uh, guys. So that was it on this part. And uh, with this, um, we can consider the last question. Is this JKL is a tangent? Prove that it's a tangent. Now they are saying it's proof. Remember, their question is that they will ask you, is it, like I said before in our previous exercise, they can ask you that, is it, now they are saying prove, which meaning to, meaning to say it is a tangent. We are supposed to prove that it is. It is already a tangent. So if it is a tangent, this is what we know. A tangent, when drawn, we know that the concept is from our tangent. It is supposed to be an angle between a tangent and a chord. That is what we are used to. An angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to angle in the what? Alternate segment. So if this is x, this must be x. So if we check before, we are told that this is a line. We are just told jkl is a straight it is a straight line we are just told that it's a straight line so it's 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 impossible for us to have a straight line like this and giving us an angle of 60 degrees which is the same as the angle of 60 degrees here giving us an angle of 90 degrees here which is the same as 90 degrees here it is not just a normal straight line. That's a tangent. So meaning to say we are talking about what the, the converse theorem of our theorem 7, which is if the angle between a line and a chord equals the angle subtended by the chord in the alternate segment, then the line is a tangent then the line is a tangent. So since we can see that from this concept, we can see that uh, angle is um, 3.22. All right, we can see that angle A, I'm going to use this one, uh, K N to M is equal to angle L, L K M. L, K, to M. Also, angle, this one, uh, J, K, J, to K, uh, to N, is equal to this angle, K, M, N. K, M, N, which is equal to 90 degrees. Uh, this one was the one for 60 degrees. So this, this can only happen if this line is a tangent. So here we are talking about the converse theorem. So you're going to have the converse there. All right. So we are simply, if, if the angle, so if the angle between a line, so it was a line as we are given between a line and a chord and a chord all right equals the angle subtended uh, by the chord so also i'm going to show you guys how to write this in a shorter way uh, by a chord in the alternate in the alternate segment 
in the alternate uh, segment, then the line is a tangent. Is a tangent to the circle. So that is the idea there, to the circle. So that is what exactly I needed there. Okay. So the reason that we use is the converse of our theorem. The theorem is the angle between a tangent to the circle and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So there we are given it as a line, just as a normal line that we are used, just a normal straight line. But the properties that this line is creating, they are not normal. They are not just normal properties, no. These are properties of a tangent. It's only, it's only, only a tangent that can do that. So this is what you need to understand. Revise as much as you can. Know your theorems. To, to know your theorem, you can know the converse of it because you have the idea of the theorem already. Anyways, we shall have more questions to come. Like I said, let's do as many questions as we can as we are preparing for the exams ahead of time.